the Alps, a 1,200 kilometer barrier of rock and ice. This 120 million year old mountain range features summits of over 4,000 meters above sea level. Some say the glaciers were already there before the mountains rose up. Then nature enabled birds to fly over them. Here, the horizon meets icy, windswept walls everywhere. Prey fears predators as much as on the plains. But more than anything, all animals must be able to develop strategies to survive the winter. The golden eagle. This bird can perform air acrobatics in a windstorm, swooping at 200 kilometers per hour. This formidable flying hunter will have to share its territory with another bird of prey with a three-meter wingspan, the bone-breaking bearded vulture. Shot over seven years and exclusively with free wild animals, this film tells the tale of the masters of the sky. Late March, it's snowing, and this female golden eagle has just laid a second egg. The couple occupies a nest that's been empty for three years. It's the beginning of six long weeks of brooding under the safe overhang. Minus four degrees Celsius. Since the eagles lay their eggs only once a year, exposing their most precious treasure to the cold is out of the question. The female must not leave the nest. The male goes hunting. Lying in ambush, the eagle examines the situation. For him, squirrels are among smaller prey. His 2.2 meter wingspan does not play in his favor. In the large branches, he's not likely to catch a squirrel. Golden eagles can adapt their hunting strategies depending on the prey, or give up. Three kilometers away from the nest on the south side, this cliff is the wintering place of a herd of ibex. In late March, among the ungulates weakened by cold and hunger, natural selection is merciless. And on the icy slope, accidents are not uncommon. Yesterday, a great male fell. The eagle is wary before going to the carcass. A fox and crows are evidence that the place is safe. Flying at full speed in the snow or between large branches exposes the eagle's eyes to potential wounds but nature fitted them with deep eyebrow arches and translucent membranes that act as windscreen wipers. In winter, the formidable hunter willingly turns into a carrion bird. Throughout his life, he has been through endless storms, skies overcast with thick clouds that prevented him from hunting or looking for carrions, and even forced him to abstain from eating for about 10 days. Tomorrow, everything may be covered with snow. 
foxes will have hidden the leftovers. In a single meal, starving eagles can triple their average daily ration of 250 grams of meat. Birds of prey used to dominate almost all of Europe. For centuries, eagles were relentlessly hunted down by man, so they fled to remote valleys. Over the last 50 years, things have changed a lot. Birds of prey are strictly protected. With 1,300 couples of golden eagles flying over the Alps, the species is now safe. 40 days have passed. On this morning in May, an eaglet was born in the nest on the Great Cliff. It's a female. The small 100-gram fluffy ball keeps warm under her mother, awaiting the second egg to hatch. Three days later, a young male has broken his shell. In the first days, the mother stays in the nest to care for her young and feed them with the prey brought by the male. On the menu, only fresh meat. Without their mother's help, they would starve to death next to the marmot, which they are unable to rip apart. The female allows herself a short flight and is repeatedly assaulted by a common kestrel and a carrion crow, which also nest on the cliff. The male brings branches of stone pine. He does not stay long, but while the female is away, he remains constantly next to the eyrie. The young female exhibits behavior that is common in eagles during the first two weeks of their lives, siblicide. The adults are watching the nest, but do not intervene. Female birds of prey are always bigger than males, and being three days younger, the male is not likely to survive. The next day, only one eaglet is still alive in the nest on the Great Cliff. Such behavior is not systematic. In 10 years, the couple has raised two pairs of eaglets that have left the nest. 100 kilometers further south, a bearded vulture explores new horizons. This adult with a 2.8 meter wingspan has been roaming for months. In Europe, Africa and the Himalayas, bearded vultures glide above the wild steppes and mountains. Everything in these birds' morphology enables them to travel long distances. In search of a territory, he flies north. On the 4,000-meter summits, winter is year-long. In May, in the higher valley, every new day frees the mountains from the snow. For some, deprivation is now over. For others, the hunting season is open. Four kilometers away from the Great Cliff, Another couple of eagles have consolidated their nest near the waterfalls. Food abounds in the higher valley, so the two couples can coexist as long as they respect each other's 60 square kilometer territory. 
the male marks his territory with an undulating flight. To the other eagles, the message is clear. The higher valley is a mosaic of invisible territories, and one must belong to the same species to understand its laws. Two eaglets were born here too, but 20 days later than those from the Great Cliff. The eldest nestling does nothing else but follow his instinct. The smaller one tries to escape his brother and steps out of the safe zone. Nature leaves no choice to the masters of the sky. This necessary tragedy maximizes the surviving eaglet's chance of getting food and surviving in a world where there's no room for pity. On the same cliff as the waterfall nest, a 16-gram predator goes hunting. A wall creeper draws closer to the heap of branches to which a multitude of insects are flocked, drawn to the carrion. Several generations of eagles have used this eyrie for over a century. The Great Cliff has been hidden by clouds for the past four days. The sky is torn. The fog and rain are regarded as a gift by some, but to the eagles, they're a handicap. All their hunting attempts have failed. 1,800 meters above sea level, the six-week-old eaglet is hungry. The two adults make the most out of the sunny spell. Whereas the female tries her luck on the south side, the male dashes to 2,200 meters, where female chamois form a herd. Full-grown chamois are far too big and hard to catch. However, a newborn kid is an attainable target. In a herd, females are on the alert. They instinctively know the predator is not far away. They can sense his presence. The eagle is lying in ambush on a ridge. The sun did not stay long. The lesser the visibility, the harder the hunt. Fortunately, there's only one eaglet to feed. He's nestling under the overhang. Hunger adds to the cold and wet weather, making a dangerous combination for a juvenile. is waiting. He's on the lookout for the opportune moment. With a swoop, the eagle reaches his maximum speed. 
Folding up his wings like a fighter jet to curb air resistance, he exceeds 200 kilometers per hour without losing sight of his target. Missed. His failure is only due to the group's extreme alertness. With a quick look, he's chosen a new target, and with a perfectly mastered U-turn, he swoops again. This time, 400 meters above the nest, the attack is a complete success. The eagle usually eats his prey on the spot, but he must feed the eaglet and carry this kid of almost three kilograms, which is almost as heavy as he is. After a few days, the heavier and agile kids will force the eagle to turn to marmots before the ibex kids are born. The bird of prey is never assured of success. Carried by the updrafts in the big rock walls of the alpine foothills, the bearded vulture continues to go north. Wiped out in the Alps before being reintroduced by man, bearded vultures are slowly recolonizing their old empire. Certain individuals can travel up to 600 kilometers a day. Some were observed as far as the Netherlands before flying back to the Alps. This one was born 80 kilometers from here in another valley. For five years, he molted his feathers and his figure became finer until he became this remarkable glider. He traveled for a long time and even tried to mate next to his birthplace. When he was six years old, his mate mysteriously disappeared. Disturbed by man, he moved on again. During his long wandering journey, the vulture cleaned many a carcass. He followed wolves twice, eating the bones that the carnivores left behind. He flew over 4,000 meter summits over some of the highest glaciers in Europe. He went up to 5,000 meters. He traveled across valleys, from the wildest to the most populated. He met unusually peaceable eagles and another bearded vulture that was wandering as well. They found what they were looking for, a territory without any of their kind, quiet and full of game. Early June is a new opportunity for the eagles. Female ibex distance themselves to give birth on plateaus that are hard to access. Forty-eight hours after their birth, the kids will follow their mother on the steep cliffs, out of man's reach.
That was a close call. Skimming the relief, the eagle came upon the kid as he was about to join the herd with his mother. The same story has recurred for thousands of years. Predators attack and prey tries to escape. While the fight may seem unfair, for every kid caught, tens of others survive. Some four kilometers away, the eaglet pays attention to anything that moves. Between the male's lightning quick visits and the mother being away more and more often, the martin's comings and goings are becoming his favorite hobby. At least when he's sated, because he has not eaten since yesterday. He has no choice but to wait for his parents' return. A marmot is a perfect prey in terms of size. The eagle's tactics are simple. This time, they hunt together. In early July, the young venture outside for the first time. The mother is constantly worried. The marmots count on the group to warn them about any danger. The carefreeness of the three offspring makes them vulnerable. They still do not know the rules of this closely knit society. This colony of 22 marmots, divided into three families, lives defenseless above the forest at 2,300 meters. They are so vigilant that it's hard for just one eagle to rely on the element of surprise. Once the male is gone, the marmots relax their attention. That's when the female attacks. This time, the hunting strategy works perfectly. It's not always the case. Nine times out of 10, eagles fail. Having observed the kill, the male joins the female. He will take the prey to the nest. The three kids are safe and sound. The appetite of the elder sister made her venture much too far from the burrow and proved fatal to her. An eagle's eyesight is eight times more accurate than ours. With over 500,000 receptors per square millimeter, twice as many as humans, the eaglet's piercing look has detected the approaching meal. In the 80 days that precede his first flight, the parents bring back a total of 25 kilograms of meat to their juvenile. The eaglet now appropriates the marmot by covering it. Within a few days, the adults will stop bringing him food. He will have to fly away. He has learned to take care of his plumage and rip prey apart but he still does not realize how powerful his formidable weapon-like talons are. In the waterfall nest, born three weeks later, the eaglet is getting bigger by the day. His feathers are growing and his metabolism demands more and more meat. The adults hunt for him every day because the chances of success are slim in view of the many attempts, the weather, the long waits, or the most sophisticated strategies. Without getting too close to the nest, the bearded vulture explores this part of the valley. 
the seven-year-old adult has yet to nest. Although the new couple is now going steady, he often flies solo. He glides for hours in search of wild ungulate carcasses, other than those from the flocks of ewes at their summer grazing. The wall creeper is not at all intimidated by the big vulture. A mere 10 meters away, he's hunting for insects to feed his young. The hunter's formidable beak drives the prey out of the cracks. Sometimes they manage to escape. But the wall creeper has a secret move. He flies like a butterfly, stands still, or even goes backwards. July the 20th, the nest on the Great Cliff is empty. Urged on by hunger, the eaglet has flown away. The white markings on his wings and tail are a distinguishing feature of immature golden eagles. This king among birds has a life expectancy of 20 to 30 years. For five months, the juvenile will roam the same territory as his parents. He will learn to use the wind and hunt. He won't be an adult for another five years. Of all birds, raptors have the best eyesight. If our eyes were proportionately as big as theirs, they would be the size of an orange. By moving to a new form, this mountain hare might have made a fatal mistake. Usually, hares go outside at night while the eagles are sleeping. They spend the day motionless in their forms. To keep them busy, nature allows them to re-ingest their vitamin B-rich droppings produced while they rest. The slender figure of a vulture with a diamond-shaped tail dashes through the sky. On top of the cliff, a family of marmots that has suffered countless golden eagle attacks. These marmots seem to be able to tell a vulture from a predator. Summer is over. The bellowing stags herald the first frosts before the return of snow. Everyone makes the most of the mild autumn before enduring the cold. Here, nature gives life and takes it back, and everyone must abide by mysterious forces that are dictated by time and shorter days. For the eagles, the signs of a new mating season are back. The eagle may look calm, but he's annoyed by these bearded vultures that increasingly intrude on his territory. He decides to act.
The next day, the eagle flies to his favorite lookout. The human eye has a fovea centralis for binocular vision. Eagles have two. He can thus focus on his prey in high definition, all the while analyzing the traps in the relief. The mountain hare is already growing winter fur, although he's still hard to make out. From over a kilometer away, the eagle spots the hare that has escaped him several times. He could detect a snow vole from 400 meters away. Before attacking again, the eagle decides to get a little closer. But a shadow disrupts a hunting party that should have been ordinary. The attack unexpectedly comes from the young bearded vulture. The resident eagle is unwilling to fight and only dodges the attack. Golden eagles are also excellent aerial acrobats. The eagle finally reaches the cliff, 400 meters away from the form. A bit too late. The hare is gone. As for the plump rock partridges that can stay calm and motionless, he did not see them. The marmots will be hibernating for the next five months. Deprived of 80% of his summer diet, the hunter becomes a carrion bird again during the winter stretch. But in November, there are few carcasses. The young eagle is hungry. He must hunt. But catching prey requires training and perseverance. His self-confidence seems limitless. He wasted energy trying to catch this full-grown chamois. He will eventually learn. Things are different for bearded vultures. They're only interested in dead animals. They can fly long distances to find their bones. High in calorific value, bones represent 80% of their diet. The rest is composed of sinews and meat. The juvenile has found a piece of backbone. He too lacks experience, and several times he tries to break the vertebrae in order to swallow them. With ungulate legs, it's a common and effective technique that has earned the species its nickname of bone breaker. After 10 attempts, the bird takes wing with the unbreakable booty in his talons. In late November, the seven-month-old eagle continues to learn over the same territory as his parents. For the first time, he flies over rutting chamois, For the overexcited chamois, no holes are barred, and sometimes one of the rivals dies from a wound. The eagles, bearded vultures, and other carrion birds then quickly clean up the scene of the accident.
December. At 2,500 meters, it is freezing cold. Ibex and rock ptarmigans indulge in the tepid sun. Over-equipped for Arctic conditions, the hare prefers to stay in the shade. December the 15th. The north wind brings the first winter storm. This is one of the most hostile places in Europe. The eagles are not braving the freezing gust, they are playing in it. Nothing seems to stop them. Such aerial games show how powerful and deft these peerless predators are. The high mountain is a merciless territory. Sometimes ibex take excessive risks for a tuft of dry grass. This ibex kid has lost his mother. He will never find her. The fox did find her at the bottom of the cliff, but the eagles also covered the female ibex carcass. The fox challenges the eagle above. He fluffs his fur to bluster. Such intimidation does not guarantee exclusive access. It's barely enough to dissuade the eagle from attacking. The golden eagle is an apex predator and in times of dearth, he does not hesitate to assail the fox. It's best to give up. Bad weather makes the hunt difficult, and there are few carrion. The starving couple no longer share the prey with the eaglet, even though they raised him with so much care just six months ago. They need to turn from the now cumbersome juvenile. The mating season is coming. The same week, repeated attacks from the other eagles in the valley precipitate his departure. The eaglet leaves the family territory and the higher valley once and for all. Four to five years of vagrancy await him. His immature plumage will make the territorial eagles less aggressive, they will drive out the young intruder without inflicting any serious injury. As he improves his hunting techniques, he will realize that although it may look like an ideal retreat, the mountain has its dark side. The following autumn, in the motionless, cold October air, the couple of bearded vultures waits for the first updrafts. Bone breakers are no great builders. They are used to squatting eagles' nests.
Meticulously, tirelessly, he explores every wall, every gully, every crevice. In order to brood and raise the chick in safe conditions, he looks for a place well protected from bad weather and land predators, and far away from human activity. After a few months of tensions and several air battles, the eagle now tolerates the great vulture, a species that had not been in the valley for almost a century. He's not really a rival. After visiting 17 nests, the Chuffs Cliff seems to be the only option. This eyrie might still be in use. No matter. Nature gives bearded vultures an advantage over eagles that only choose their nests in March. The mating season is going to keep the vultures busy for nine months. Before mating, bearded vultures spend a lot of time side by side, smoothing each other's neck feathers and beards. Their lofty romance comes to a sudden end when a juvenile appears at the bottom of the valley. Traditionally tolerant on their territory, they no longer accept any congener near the nest. The couple is going to expel the juvenile for the third time. To end it once and for all, they grab his talons, wheel around, and only release him at ground level. December the 21st. This time of year, ibex reach their maximum weight and strength. Started at dawn, the fight goes on and on. Usually, the weaker one does not insist, but this time the two males are equally strong. The animals here have always ignored, ogled, weighed up and coveted one another evaluating the hazard before going about their business.
early January. The female vulture has been brooding on the cliff since yesterday. Near the eerie, the male smooths his feathers under an overhang. For the ibex, the mating season is coming to an end, but some females have yet to be fecundated. The juvenile has left the valley. In six months or a year, he might come back. New horizons. Surely winter has killed for him elsewhere. mountains, carcasses quickly disappear. To increase his chances, the bearded vulture has to travel very long distances. For two days, he feeds on a chamois killed by wolves. The predator has gone with the head, leaving the leftovers to birds. Bearded vultures are the last link in the food chain. Their widely cloven beaks and elastic throats enable them to swallow 20 centimetre bones. Their gastric juices are so powerful that no bone can resist them. The juvenile swallows so many bones that he will be able to spend a week without eating. His quiet flight often startles those that pace up and down the mountains all year round, from the bottom of valleys to 4,000 metre summits. Unlike golden eagles, he does not hesitate to fly over the two-legged animal. Man is neither an endangered species nor prey, just the greatest predator on Earth, a species that once wiped out these vultures. The bearded vulture resumes his journey into the unknown. This flying wanderer has no territory. This will last a few more years. March, in the inaccessible nest on the Chuffs Cliff, a chick was born 10 days ago. Some 80 centimeters of snow fell in 24 hours. Thanks to their sixth sense, the animals were on their guard. Almost all of them survived. Instinct does not always protect from danger. Two chamois are missing. A godsend for the vulture. He will come back later. Early July. Success has come knocking for the couple of vultures. After 110 days, their first chick will leave the nest, confirming the real return of bone breakers in the valley. The mother will never know how happy the two-legged animal feels when he finds out about it. 
for all those who took part in the biggest reintroduction and preservation program ever implemented in Europe. The return of bearded vultures is an ode to life. The masters of the sky need nothing but tranquility and space to live and breed, following rituals established by millions of years of evolution. Such is life in the mountains.